hello i've come in a bit early it's my first time so i'm trying to get prepared so hopefully you're in with me but we'll we'll get in early and um i can see there's seven people in say hi um i'm Gemma. if you've never seen me before and um, Gemma crow i've been i've taught sport rotten beads in person many many times but never done an online um, workshop with sport rotten beads so i'm really excited so i'm really hoping that you'll stay with me chat loads and do the do the um, demonstration either along or do it after and ask loads of questions because i love answering questions and whilst well, you've got me live ideal opportunity to um, quiz me about how to do certain things and i'll do my best to keep up so um i'm I'm hoping. Oh, look, there's a message. Hi, Gemma. Hi, yeah. Who's this? Oh, hello, uh, Rachel from Barrow in Finesse. Oh, thank you for the welcome. That's so lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know there's going to be lots of new people I've never met today, so I'm really excited about that too. Um, hi, Geraldine. Uh, first time seeing you. I'm from North Carolina. Oh, well, hello across the pond. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully you'll enjoy today. Um, I do lots of different jewelry making um, techniques and mediums, so you'll probably see quite a few different things from me. Hopefully, if you have me back. Uh, <laughs> hi, Mandy. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, hi, Jeanette in Maryland. There's lots of you from uh, across the pond. I was told that there's lots of you coming from from um, America, so that's really exciting. I feel all international, which is really cool. Hi, Leslie. Nice to see you. I'm so glad you could make it. And you haven't had enough of me already this week. Hi, Celia. Oh, hi, Elizabeth. Oh, this is lovely. So many chats. Um, great Yarmouth. Are we going to have a competition? Who's the furthest away today? I don't know if I'll be able to keep up or even work it out because my geography is not great. So, <laughs> hi, Isabel. Oh, I'm excited You're, you've come, you've come um, along, Isabel, too. So I'm excited to see you, too. Hi Sue, lovely to have you back at SRB, yay! <laughs> I've been I've been working my way back ever since I left. Um, hi Suzanne from Cornwall, hi Corinne, uh, lovely to see me again after such a long time. I was on a course with you and Debbie Bolford, how long ago was that? Wow, yeah that's probably would be about seven years ago. That was a lovely day wasn't it? That was a lovely day. Um, that was here in Gloucester wasn't it, at the Farmers Club. Yeah, so I'm in the UK, I'm in Gloucester. You could probably tell by my accent, although I don't think I've got one, but other people tell me I have. Um, hi, Anita, from Dynam Market in Norfolk. Oh, nice. From all over the place. So there's, there's um, lots of you in. So like I was saying, I will, um, I'll get into the demo and I will be answering, I'll be trying to keep a check on the questions and answering. So if by any chance I miss one because my eyes are elsewhere, then um, please don't don't be afraid to repeat the question because I will um, try and look up time to time to make sure I'm not missing anything. And I know that the lovely Julia is in um, trying to answer questions um, for you as well and type in links and things like that because there's lots for you to know about and lots of things for you to get involved in that I'm sure Juliet will tell you all about um, too. So, um, nice to see you. Hi from Texas. Oh, hi, Catherine. Nice to meet you. It's lovely to have so many um, new new people to say hello to. Hi, Christine. Hi, Suzanne. Oh, hi, Ginny. Hi, Marilyn. Um, hi, Jewel Box Heaven. Hi, yeah, Sharon. Um, watching from a moving car. Well, I hope you're not driving because that could be. I won't do anything too distracting. I'll try not to. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so here in the comments, Juliet's put a link to some um, instructions. So there's also along with it today, if you want to, obviously you can rewatch this tutorial as many times as you like, and um, because it will be available um, on YouTube and I should should imagine via the Sport Rotten Beads website. And there's also some images um, of the stages, and Juliet has written up a few brief instructions as well. So the two hand in hand, hopefully. The project um, will be easy for you to to go go through. If you're not driving, oh, that's good. Hi, Sylvia. Um, hi, Ginny from Utah, from Vienna. Wow, this is wonderful. 
looking forward to the demo demo and I, yeah i will get on with it soon i just want to make sure that um we we start not too too early just to allow people to get in and settle in you have to make sure you've got a cup of coffee because it's a lot of chattering and um and we're meeting new people so this is really fun uh morning from maryland hello molly yeah yeah so you can download the instructions and the and the um photographs as well if you if you want to do that some people like to have photographs i do I, i'm a visual person i think most of us creatives are aren't we we like to see things and study the picture sometimes we don't need the words we just need the pictures so you can have a bit of both um <clears throat> I'll be doing a bit of wire work for you today. I don't know if you've seen the tutorial. I'll show you it whilst we're, whilst we're getting ready. So I'll, I've got the other camera, but I will show you just hanging up here. So this is what we'll be doing today. It's a wire work frame and it surrounds one of these lovely cabochons. And then we've added some extra bits that you can add if you want to, or you can leave off. And we've also got a rosary link chain on there too. So frames made with wire. Then we'll be um, encrusting the frame with some preciosa bicones and then uh, embellishing a bit further with some seed beads a size 11 i have to check all these things um size eight size eight toho seed beads and we'll be doing so we'll be doing that yeah and i'll show you how to put it together and there's loads of adaptions you can make once you've got the technique so the world's your oyster the kits um the kits for this tutorial are will also be um in the link in this video and i'm sure oh hello faye that's my sister um i'm sure juliet will put the links in for the kits which are an amazing price and they're going to go a long way so you can do more than one project with one kit so just get yourself some extra cabochons because you'll be wanting to make loads of these they make great pendants but also great brooches as well um oh i've got lots of names um Nancy Zimmerman. Hi, Nancy. It's lovely to see you over here. And um, hello, my sister Faye. Mwah. Thank you for sharing the video into into uh, my other pages. That's great. Um, Victoria. Hi, yeah. Looking forward to your demo. I can't make jewelry at the minute. I broke my wrist. Oh no. Uh, and had an op, so keeping myself busy watching others. But that's it. Just taking all the inspiration. You'll be storing it all up, and as soon as it's better, you'll be ready to explode with creativity. Oh, that's an awful thought, breaking my, my son broke his wrist um, last year, nasty break, and it, it's taken him a long time to, to recover, not, not just to recover, but to have confidence in it again. So good luck to you, Victoria. Um, link to the kits is in the, in the stream now, so you can go and take a look there. Hi, Helen, nice to see you. Glad to catch a live, I know, it's lovely catching lives, isn't it? I, I sometimes get get a chance to catch live live demos it's nice to natter isn't it i love watching them after but it is nice to join in with the chat good morning from nashville in tennessee hi lisa and hi susan afternoon my love to you too oh it's so lovely to have um have some lovely familiar names and some new names too it looks like this chat is pretty good at keeping up i'm used to having to scroll backwards and forwards to find everything but it's working um Oh, hello, Mum. My mum's here. <laughs> it's a family affair. So everybody, Sherry's my mum and Faye's my sister. Uh, they're lovely women. Lovely women. I'm very lucky to have lots of lovely women in my life. Uh, good morning from New York. Good morning, Patricia. Um, good morning from Pennsylvania. Hello. Uh, you love my necklace. Yeah, this is uh, one of my wiry ones. I've been teaching this morning as well. I've been doing wire work, so... I'm dressed for wire working. I should probably swap them, shouldn't I? But I, I want to be able to show you this one. So, but thank you, thank you very much. This one's called gratitude, and I, I actually thought today was a good day to um, feel grateful for things because I'm very grateful to be here. I'm very grateful to be teaching this morning, and grateful for the sunshine and the wind has stopped. So yeah, it's a good day to be grateful today. Uh, hi, Paula from Devon. Um, hi Abby, can't stay Jen, but just wanted to say good luck hun, uh, I'll smash this, thank you, well I hope we don't smash too many things, <laughs> but um, hopefully I'll definitely nail the demo, That's that, that'll be a good start. Um, hi Tina, just finished work, um, hi mum and sis, <laughs> there you go mum and Faye, you've got some highs as well, and hello from Romania, wow, <clears throat> this is wonderful, and I, I know I literally have not stopped rabbiting, so um, 
it's six minutes past two. So hopefully everybody that's that is planning on joining us live is in or we'll catch up as we get get going. So I think we'll get started. I've got new technology, so bear with me moving things around a little bit and hopefully it will all work out well. Um but um yeah, bear with me just in case. So what I'm gonna do now is make myself a bit smaller so I can sit up in the top um, and you can still see me talking to you. And I'll remember that you can still see me and not make any funny faces, hopefully. Concentration faces, I've got some funny ones. Um, and then, and here's here's the camera for our hands. Hopefully it's clear enough for you. The, the zoom is um, taken off of auto and set to be about right here. So um, I'll try and make sure that I bring things into the right space so that you can see in detail. We'll take a bit of time to make sure that happens. Um, Gem, you're an old hand at this old malarkey. Yeah, I should be by now, shouldn't I? I should be. But it is, it's all new. It's all new technology and I've learnt new things. And Juliet's been very patient with me, um, with my tech. And my son's been helping me too. Um, oh, who have I missed? I've missed somebody from Romania. Who did I miss? I must say hello because um, it's, it's, I don't want to miss, miss anybody. I, oh, what's happened? Oh, there we go. Uh, hi. Oh, let's see if I can pronounce your name. And I'm so sorry if I don't do it correctly. Marita Marina. Marita Marina. What a beautiful name. From Romania. Hello. Um, Kathy from Duf Dufin. Dufan, PA. I missed the intro, but glad I'm catching the tu tutorial. Um, oh, I'm sure we'll natter all the way through. So you haven't missed much. I've just talked at a million miles an hour. Charlie, you love my necklace, thank you. Um, it's still windy here, says Rachel, but I do live by the sea. Uh, some people think I live by the sea because you'll hear lots of seagulls, but I don't. I, I live in the city centre where there, where I think because the wind's been so strong, there's been a lot of rubbish blown around and the seagulls love that. Um, hi from Maine, uh, from Ange Angeline in USA, hello. Um, and hi Mandy Alexander, nice to see you, thank you for joining us. Um, it is very techy, Charlie. It is. Just need to tip the cam a bit, lol. Okay, let's see if I can tip the cam a bit. Just tip it there a little bit. My arm for my camera isn't quite long enough to come all the way over the top, so hopefully this will this will work and it's the right perspective for you. Feedback always welcome. So if um, you want me to do something different for next time, I will see if I can. Um, work on that uh, and and um, make it better. Get we learn as we go along, won't we? Okay. Right. New message. Oh, it tells me when I got a new message that I haven't read. Um, we'll be your guinea pigs. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and good morning from South Ozone Park in New York. Good morning, Anita. Uh, right. Shall we get cracking then? So, let me talk you through the tools that we need. For this project so it's a it's a nice simple wire project so if you've never done it before it's a great way it's a great little project to um use your seed beads with um because you get all these lovely little areas that you can fill with with seed beads or crystals or gems and um, so basic toolkit then i've got my round nose pliers which i will use um so just these are the pliers with the round round jaws I got and they're slightly tapered, so these are really great for making your small loops and spirals. Um, hi Beth, and don't worry, catch it on replay, lovely. Um, can't wait to make this one. Says uh, Vaca One. I don't know your real name, but yeah, get your kit. Um, and then these are your snipe nose pliers or flat nose pliers. We'll use these for holding and bending and things like that. And then you'll need some um, cutters. You can see these are very well loved, but these are wire cutter pliers, so they're going to cut my wires, give me a nice flush cuts um, when I make when I make those. Okay, so cutters, and then um, something a little bit more niche that you that you may not have in your stash. Um, these are stepped bail makers. Now Juliet does have some of these available in shops, limited quantity, and just for our tutorial today, she's put 15% off. So if you did want to get hold of these, um, you can get them at a great price today. So um, these are six step bell makers and what they allow you to do is make 
consistently sized loops. So you can use Rhino's pliers if you want to, but it's an idea to mark where on your pliers you use because it's hard to get a consistent size because they're tapered. Okay, so these are really, really helpful. Other things you could use are um, mandrels, so you can get stepped mandrels that you can use, and they're really good as well. I like pliers because they're like an extra, it's like an extra hand you can you can turn and grip with them as well. So grab some of those if you if you manage to get in early enough, you might be able to get some. Okay, then materials. So we've got our components here are some 0.8 millimeter wire. This is the silver plated. There are others, um, other colours, and um, you can get gold plated, silver plated, copper, rose gold, all those. Um, so this is the wire that we use in 0.8 um, and a 0.4. Okay, so the 0.8 is going to do our framework, and the 0.4 is basically like our thread that stitches everything together. Good morning, Julie Hans. Um, you've got your zero and flush cutters. You can't wait to try them out. Yep, today's the day. Um, try them out. Love Zoran tools. Yeah, they're very good, aren't they? Mine are very well loved. Um, in fact, I think mine are, yeah, mine are very well loved. I could do with a new pair. Um, and then, for the goodies to put inside your designs, uh, we've got these gorgeous check glass cabochons. Now, um, they've got the most gorgeous patterns across the top. Like They're like planets. They're swirly, whirly patterns. Um, and it, this lovely mottled effect. We, these are lovely and they're a 30 a 25 millimeter round um now you know there are other other rounds you can use um cabochons you can use you can go bigger if you want i wouldn't recommend going smaller but you can go bigger if you want to but these are these are lovely and this is what we're using today um so this one is like a, a i'd say it's like strawberry color and this one's like lime greens and golds and browns it's it's really lovely this one so we need one of those You'll need some uh, four millimeter Preciosa bicones. Um, in the pack, you get thirty, so that's more than enough to do to do the project. Um, in fact, you can probably probably do two just about with the with the bicones. So you'll need some of those. You will also need some Ato Toho seed beads. Now the the kits that have been put together expertly put together with colour. One, one thing that um, sport room bees are absolutely brilliant at, they've got a great team of people that make jewellery, so they put beautiful colours together. Um, so these are, these are this colour is a sweet blush, and this is in the sort of pink variety, the pinky colour, and then in the, the greeny, the greens and lime greens variety, the colour here is uh, lemongrass which is gorgeous it, it's you can almost smell it it's so good the color um yeah so i think that's all the all the ingredients so we'll get cracking with a the demo then right so first off i'm going to clear my board i've got this darker piece of piece of uh, paper down here on my board just so that hopefully the contrast helps with um seeing everything good morning from harker uh heights in texas it's a blustery day there um you bought my book? Oh, thanks, Julie. You bought my book? At, yeah, I saw the order come through, actually. Faye's processing it for you. Thank you very much. Um, beautiful cabochons. Yes, they are, Julie, really are. Um, and, uh, some, uh, there's, I, I'm trying to work out which is talking amongst yourselves and which is talking to me. So. <laughs> uh, you're, you're an... Um, you're, Unco Rachel says, I'm uncomfortable with wire work as I've never been taught properly. Need some lessons, but I'm virtually housebound and I don't think there is anywhere near that teaches in Cumbria. Oh, well, Cumbria, um, Cum Rachel, not Cumbria. Your name's not Cumbria. Um, just keep keep a check out. I, I run beginner wire work courses, so you can find me after, after I think Juliet will put links to, to anywhere you can find me. I do beginner wire work courses every week. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's courses or there's individual workshops so have a look because they're all online um, and, it, and it works pretty well so but this is a nice beginner technique so start with this one and see how you get on 
Okay, so I'm going to cut a length of my 0.8 wire. Now you can work from the reel if you want to um, be cautious about how much wire you use, but I find, especially if I'm demonstrating, um, the wire flicks around and make lo lots of noise, so I'm gonna cut mine off. So I'm gonna give myself a good sort of 70 or 80 centimeters to work with. You could go for a bit more, uh, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that much. And then I'm going to take my bail making pliers and when I'm selecting what size loop, so that what I'm going to make now is the, is the loop section that goes around the cabochon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the loops, the, the sections on my, on my bail makers and just see which size loop best suits the size of the bicone. So we've got a four millimeter bicone and on my bail making pliers, I think the third step is probably the most suited to the, the size that we need. So I'm gonna use this third step on my bail makers, okay? And then I'm going to come down from the end of my wire. I'm gonna leave myself about, you know, eight to nine centimeters, or so, four inches or so um, at the end, just so I've got something to work with later. And then I'm gonna pop my, the jaws of my pliers, I'm gonna hold on with the jaws and I've got this section here is where I want to make my first loop around this section on the bail makers, okay? So I'm going to take my longer end of the wire and I'm going to start passing that around the bail makers, okay? So that's gone around like that. I can't go any further because my bail makers, are, the jaws are in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove those and put them back in the same place on the same mandrel and then I'm gonna to continue to take that wire around, okay? Now what I want to achieve is I want a nice straight line of wire with little loops coming off it. So if I take that off, you can see that these, what this wire here running along the back is gonna stay nice and straight and the loops are gonna sit alongside one another along this straight piece of wire. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pliers again and I'm gonna come in right next to the last loop I made and I'm going to take the wire around again. So this time, this time you'll see me swiveling this around because um, trying to, you can swivel this around and, and move it around so that you can position the loop properly. Okay. Now you can see I'm lining mine up, and I've probably been doing some really great concentration faces, haven't I? <laughs> um, you got sorry I'm missing comments so Rachel you said you were always uncomfortable with wire but then you got a project from one of your subscription boxes that was all wire work got used to it really quickly yeah that's it just have a go it's always a nice skill to have in your armory a few techniques so it's, it's good to have a go so you make your own clasps and things like that um, I didn't say I got good at it just used to it <laughs> okay um, my nails look lovely, thank you, Julie. Um, okay, right, so can you see how I've got that loop there? Well, I want it closer to this loop. So I want it really close. So instead of pushing this wire around to make it straight and to finish the loop, I'm actually going to push against the wires just here and push around until the loops are right next to one another. And that's gonna finish the circle for me, okay? And then make sure that Ooh, make sure that that wire is still out. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pull that out. I'm sorry, Zoom has interrupted me and saying that I've been idle. So I'm gonna click that off. <laughs> um, so I've got two loops next to one another now. And what I wanna do is I wanna continue to make those loops. So for this design, I need um, around 14 loops. Now I'm saying that around 14 loops because it depends how closely together you, you make them and um, how big you make them. So if you're using a different tool and you've got a different size, then you might need more or you might need less. So we're just going, I'm just going to now carry on along here, popping loops in and I'm either pulling the wire around to get the loop where I want it or pushing the, the wire around to get the loop where I want it. Okay, and just keep an eye, keep coming back and checking that that line is still nice and straight, okay? And those loops are nice and close together. So we just keep going. 
along along like this so I'm going to work a little bit faster now and uh, read the chat while I'm doing it okay you're you're the second Gemma I've watched doing wire today was it a Gemma with a G or was it a Gemma with a J there's not as many Gemma with G's I don't think <laughs> uh, who was the other one um good question Anita I was wondering the same okay let me see where that question was. <clears throat> Many wires will come with measurements on the spool. Let me just find this question. Hi, Nan. <laughs> oh. Right. Let me find the question. Or would you put it back in again? Good question, Anita. So where's Anita? By any chance, do you know the conversion for the wire sizes in the US? We have numbers such as 60S yes, gauges. Um, I, I don't. Does anybody else know? Maybe Juliet knows. Um, oh, there you go. Juliet says 0 0.8 is 20 gauge and 0 0.4 is an 18 gauge. Thank you. Um, no, 0 0.4 is a 26 gauge. I, was gonna, I thought it was a bit bigger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Um, she's from England too. Oh, okay. Do you know, I was named after um, a man. I was named after Jeremy. So my name, because everybody called him Jem for short, my uncle Jeremy. Uh, and so um, they called me Gemma so that they could shorten it to Jem. <laughs> so I was named after a man, fun fact. Uh, but it suits, it suits um, my line of work, doesn't it? I work with gems. And uh, my surname is Crow, and I like shiny things also. So um, I've actually been asked if my name was a stage name before, <laughs> which it probably could be, couldn't it? Jem Crow. So, yeah. Right, there's one other thing that I haven't talked to you about whilst I've been doing this that, I've, um, that I should tell you, really. So when I'm going around doing these loops, I want to make sure that they're all the same... Um, the wires are all coming the same way. So here, every time I do a loop, the wire comes um, up above towards the next one. So if I show you what I mean a bit more slowly. So I'm making my loop, and then instead of going, I could go below the wire, uh, below the, the loops, but what I want to do is come above. Now, it doesn't matter if you started going below, if that's how your hands... Um, like to work because we've all got um, ways we like to work it doesn't matter so long as you're consistent so so long as every time you do this the wire either comes above or below and um, you can't swap and change okay because what will what will happen is um, when when you come to bend it round, you'll have some loops sticking up and some loops going downwards so you want to make sure that they're always up up above Yes, Charlie, you're right. It is magpies, but um, magpies are crow family, so it's loosely. So I'm loosely related. <laughs> loosely, um, it loosely makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it is a great name. Somebody who works with gems. Oh, you watch Gem Hawks? Yeah, no, Gem with a J. Oh, the lovely Gem Hawks. She does some great tut tutorials. Um, yeah, and she is she is here in the UK. Okay, so. I don't know how many I've got on here, but I'm going to stop there because I'm sure you don't want to watch me doing all loads and loads. And what we're going to do now is we're going to manipulate this into a circle. Okay, so when you when you finish this, you might find it a bit higgledy-piggledy, a bit backwards and forwards, not quite straight. Um, so what I'm going to do is just press with my fingers. I don't want to use nylon jaw pliers or anything here to press these into place. Um, so... Because if you use nylon jaw pliers, what happens is it splays it out a little bit. We want to keep the shape. So um, what I'm doing is just pressing with my fingers to just get that into shape. Okay. And the other thing that happens when you press down with pliers or anything onto the wire is it work hardens the wire. So if you're not used to working with wire, wire comes in different hardnesses. This is like a half hard, which means it's great for holding shape when you make it. But every time you press or squeeze or twist um, or manipulate the wire what happens is like the, the crystal structure within it's it's nice and fluid while it's all even but then every time you 
press, twist or anything, the, the crystals inside go like this and make it hard. Now we need this process because we need our jewellery to be hard and durable to wear, especially rings and, and things like that. But when we want to work with it, we want to keep it soft. So we're going to try not to press too much, um, too much with pliers until we actually have to, or until we want it set in stone where we want it, okay? So what I'm going to do now is start making this into a circle. So it's going to sit around our collection. Now we, we don't want to bend it in completely like this because we want this to be slightly raised so that it lips up over the sides of the cabochon. So what I'm doing is a combination of pressing um, against it so that the, so that the um, loops are sort of sitting upwards still on the wire, like, like this, but also bringing it round. So it's a bit of a, you know, you might need to spend a bit of time manipulating this into the right shape. Okay, and we'll bring this round. And then what you can do is take it up to your cabochon and just check that it's roughly the, the right size. So I'll put, put this down here. Um, it's easier to see. So keep manipulating. I know I haven't got quite enough loops on here. So I know I would have to put a couple more in. But we'll just pop it down. See if it sits and is um, fitting well around that cabochon. Like that. Okay, and once I'm happy, I think, yep, yeah, that's about right. I've got that roughly in the right shape I need. So then we come up to the ends, these these tails that we've got sticking out. We're not going to cut them to, sh to size yet. I'm just going to knit them so that there's not loads flying around. And then I'm going to take my snipe or flat nose pliers next to the, the loop on the, the last loop on one end. And I'm just going to kink that back slightly. Okay, so just a little bend on there okay and do the same on the other side so come to the other side a little bend upwards and then that means when we draw these together these are sort of sticking up in the air so that they will eventually become the bail for our design okay and then again just bring it back to your cavachon just make sure it's the right size it doesn't matter if it's slightly too big so long as the cavachon can't fall through from the front and we also will be doing extra work around um around this frame adding beads so that it will become a slightly smaller aperture after the beads are added and so you know even if it is a little bit loose at the moment it will tighten up as we go okay Right, so next stage then is adding in our bicones. Let's pop these up here so we can get to them. And for this, we're going to use our 0.4 wire, and we're using our 0.4 wire almost like a needle and thread. Okay, so um, it's we're not necessarily doing any wire work, just just stitching together. Now, good tip for you when you get your wire, it can um, often spring out and be a bit chaotic and, and messy. So what I tend to do is put it into like a drawstring bag or something or even a an empty sort of Ziploc bag and then just have the tail sticking out and then even if it does spring, at least it springs and it's contained in a bag. So, or, or a little um, organza bag, that's the word I was looking for. Put it in an organza bag. You can still see what's going on inside but you can pull it out without the risk of it flinging everywhere. Right, so I'm going to take about about a metre-ish of my 0.4 wire. That's going to give us plenty to stitch with and um, stitch our beads into into the design with. And it's also going to give us um, enough so that we can secure the cabochon from the back once we've got the beads in place. I've lost the end of my wire now. Take this. Tangle, tangle, tangle. Um, right, there's a, a link in the chat now for the um, for the tutorial and the kit, so the photos as well. So if you want to watch the photo, look at the photos too. Um, you've missed. Sorry, you've missed. You've been chatted and missed uh, how you get the wire frame to fit the cab. Um, it's just a, just about manipulating manipulating this around. And with your fingers slowly slowly until you get it roughly into the right shape and you want those loops to be slightly angled so that they sit 
on sort of the contours of the cabochon. So it's just, just about manipulating it round to the shape of your cabochon. Okay, so um, and in the photographs you'll see stills of that, so you'll get, get a better idea of the, the camber or the, the angle that you need them to be at. Okay, so I've got my 0.4 wire. Now what I want to do is, it's a lot of wire to work with at once. So what I tend to do is go to the middle of the wire and I work from the middle of my piece one way and then I work from the middle of my of my piece the other way. That way I only have to work with half the wire at once instead of having all of it to thread through. Okay, so first off I'm going to attach my wire into the frame. So to do this I just want to sort of find roughly the centre and then can you see where the two loops sort of join or it, you know touch one another just here. I'm just going to wrap the wire around there so I'm going to take take the 0.4 wire and thread it down through one loop and up through the next loop to it and pull and again remember we're going to try and go to the center of the wire to work so that we don't have to work with loads all at the same time okay so that's it, that's how you attach your wire into your frame, just around that. Now don't worry if your um don't worry if your frame starts to distort a little bit. It's easy to get it back into shape, okay? So don't worry too much if it distorts. But just wrap the wire just around where those two loops touch. Okay, so now working with this one this wire one way around the frame, I'm gonna pick up a bicone. pick up one of these bicones. Now if you've picked the right size on your mandrel that should just sit nicely into that little loop you've made. Okay and so then what we're going to do is take that 0.4 wire down through the, the little loop next to it. Just like that and then back up through the loop that the bicone is in. Now as you pull through you see these little twists up here get on that straight away you don't want to leave that to chance so what you do to make that twist go away if you pull it that's going to pull into a tiny little twist which will make the wire really vulnerable because it will snap um, or make it difficult to pass through your beads so what you want to do at this point is just twist it open so literally twist the loop open and pull it through and just just try as you go through to avoid that happening but if it does, that's how you do it. The last thing you want to do is pull it, try and pull it straight because you'll get a little notch, which is where it gets really weak and then um, can either snap or, or you know, be difficult to get through the beads. So there we are, ready to put the next, the next little bicone in place. So that sits now into the next hole. And you do exactly the same again, down through that loop. Okay, keeping an eye that that doesn't twist. Down through the loop and up through the loop with the gemstone in or with the bicone in okay like this okay so you keep going until all the little holes are filled with beautiful bicones and eventually here's one i made earlier you get to this point okay so you can see i haven't done the last two on this one i've gone all the way around but i've missed the last two and that's because on this one we're going to do something a little bit different because these two ends are separate. We want them to join together. So I'm going to pull them together and add my last my last couple of bicones. Um, let me just check I haven't missed anything. Your battery's running out. Oh no, Patricia. Um, how do you know when to stop the looping? So Charlie, if you're doing the same measurements, if you've got the kit that we're using, and you're using the fourth, the third step on the bell makers. You're going to need 14 loops. Um, if you're using different sizes, then you, what you'll have to do is just keep manipulating it around and just keep checking. So do it by eye, and then keep going back up to it. There's nothing to stop you um, making it all the way around and then adding more loops. So I would say it's easier to add more than it is to take them out. So when you take them out, we talked about that work hardening of the wire. Um, undoing it will give you wonky wires to work with so best to do less and then add if you need to
but just keep taking it up to your to your gemstone to see um memories of that accent aunt and uncle in harvington near evesham in worcestershire yeah it's um, close to worcestershire next county along um you'd always skip over the wire wrapping tutorials <laughs> Um, Nancy says, um, I have a drilled coin gemstone. Could I attach the small wire, run it through the hole and wrap it around the top where the round wires go through and incorporate it into the bell? Yes, of course you can. Once you've got this frame, there's, you can use this frame for, to add anything in. You've got all these lovely areas to attach wires to. So you've got all these lovely little um, holes and um, little points to connect other things in or stitch other things in so once you've got this this could be a component on its own I mean you could just pop an ear wire on that and that would be a lovely earring so yeah there's nothing to stop you just incorporating um, different elements in I mean this one we have to secure the cab from the back with a drilled stone you wouldn't have to so yeah loads of options can you wrap one bicone up close to the camera so my old eyes can see i i'm so sorry um angeline i'll do it i'll do it now i'll do that now with this last section but there are photographs that are really close up so if you go to um the, the website i know juliet's put some links in where you where you get the kits you'll also find the tutorial with really close up photos so hopefully combination of the video me talking to you and then looking at the photos it'll all be nice and clear for you um okay <clears throat> How oh, annoying your ass has, has the deliveries here that always happens isn't it you wait all day nothing happens you start trying to do something and the door goes happened to me earlier it's always the postman right i'm going to try and do this one a bit closer so i'm joining the two ends together now so i've got my bicone i've just brought it dropped it onto that wire and bringing it down into i want to see how close i can get bringing it down into um the sort of little hole and I'm going to take it over to the next one now although these aren't joined this is a, sort of the same as it is all the way around so you can see that next so I'm going to do it without getting my thumbs in the way see that next um, hole along I'm going to take the wire down through it Ooh. down through there <laughs> I'm going to have to move that sorry um, down through the hole like that and then the wire back up through the same hole that that crystal's in okay so it's basically just cinching those two circles of so those two little loops together so in order to get this camera to sort of be as clear as possible with streaming it's great when you're not streaming and you're just filming but when you stream it takes a mind of its own so we turn the autofocus off because it takes too long to adjust. And so we've got it set to zoom at a certain point, the best point possible. <laughs> so I have to keep moving my hands just to see if that's the right place where I've set it to. So I'm sorry if it's not clear, but the photos will definitely help. Um, okay, so I'll do the next one. And I'll try and do this one nice and close as well. So the next one drops into that hole again. The next two, the last, this is the last one. So it drops into that last hole down through the next loop along with the 0.4 wire oh your problem Angeline I know this problem <laughs> um, you make it look so make it look so easy and then you go to do it and it looks like a boxing match between spools of wire I wonder why yeah it's 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 tricky it's like wire taming it should be a sport it's a it's a tricky thing wire taming but you know what the 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 most difficult thing is is sort of knowing where to put your hands and how to it's that dexterity part of it that's the tricky bit and that's that's the bit you only get with practice so we can give you some hints and tips and things like that along the way but it's that it's true practice makes perfect um and um yeah learning how you manipulate it yourself so i remember learning to knit and my shoulder you know my elbows are up here and i'm and it's only once you get used to it you start to relax and then your elbows drop and and it becomes easier but at first i think when we're trying new things especially wire work and seed beading and things like that where it's such tiny 
close up work we tend to get really tense and close to it uh, and sometimes it's just learning to relax with it um, that makes all the difference but that's practice that's just practice and, and repetition and um, more than anything but once you've got it you got it okay so we're here we've stitched our frame together we've got all our beads around so now what we want to do is um, infill all these little so it's like a scalloped hedge now along the inside of this frame so although this would probably just about hold that cabochon in place and I could go without using the, the seed beads if I wanted to I like the idea of just adding a little bead to embellish each of those little dips in that in that scalloped edge so what I'm going to do is use the wire so I'm still using that 0.4 wire that we that we put our bicones in with and I'm going to start adding a little little gemstone or a, a little um, seed bead along the edge okay so from here where are my beads gone just going to oh overkill on the beads there a rather a lot of beads I just tipped out that'll be fun putting those away um, so now I'm going to pick one of these little um, size 8 OC beads Toho seed beads drop it onto my wire down there okay and allow it to sit in that little crevice between the two between the in the frame there okay and then I'm going to take my 0.4 wire up through the next loop along and pull and pull into place until it just nestles itself in between the two little scallops on the edge you see that there it's just sat in between those two okay and then our wire is ready then to pick up the next one and drop it into the next little scallop okay and then wire up through the next hole along and pull now I don't suppose there's anything to stop you if you are used to using needle and thread for your beading i don't suppose there's anything to stop you you doing this with like your um dura thread or your fire line or wad file whatever it is you use you could do this bit with that it's just finishing the ends in a project like this is a bit tricky because it's not like you can keep stitching through like you would with your seed beading but you know if you're finding um you know doing this stitching with wire tricky then i suppose there are other ways you could add this this in um <coughs> You love these colours. I love these colours too. They're so bright. Do you know what? I was ever so tempted to mix them up as well because I love pink and lime green together, like a vivid pink and lime green. And I was really tempted to be a rebel and put the um, the pink stone in with the lime in with the lime green um, lemongrass seed beads and um, green uh, preciosa crystals but I never, I stuck to the rules. <laughs> but you know, you can make your own rules, get both bundles or get some different color cabs. And um, these are really like complementary palettes of color that we're using here. But why not go go for some, uh, not complementary, like tonal palettes that we're using, they're lovely. But you could go for more complementary colors, clashing colors, and um, you know, really make it your own. Oh, did you see what I did there? Sorry, I did that just without telling you what I was doing. I, it got a bit stuck and a bit difficult to pull through, so I just grabbed my chain nose pliers and just give it a bit of a tug, and it pulled through quite quite nice and easily. Hello, Claire Rob. How are you? Who was it was asking? Oh, somebody asked earlier, Angeline. It, the, answer, the answer was in there, so um, if you scroll back through, you'll see the gauge. I think it's 26 gauge is the 0.4 and I think it's 18 gauge is the 0.8 pretty sure that was it um, your, your, it looks good but you'll catch up later 
yeah, it's, it'll be there. It'll be there for you to catch up with. Okay. Pink and green do go really well together. Right. So, how are we doing? I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. It doesn't take too long. I'm just um, trying to read and bead and um, try and keep my hands in the right place as well. I have to glue my elbows to the table so that I don't move around too much. <laughs> you know, when I when I usually work, I work quite, I work sat back like this. So I sit and I have my work in front of me um, very often, easier on the back. Um, and I can see what I'm doing, like so if I'm up here. But for you, I'm holding it down here, trying to angle in. I think I need a longer arm on my new tripod because it doesn't seem to want to come over far enough. It's either that or a shorter table. I'm not sure which way to go. Right, we're nearly there. We're nearly there and we can move on to the next bit. Which, to be honest, we're nearly finished. This this is the main part of the demo. So um, once you've got this bit, this is the trickiest bit. The next bit is all about... Um, finishing the pendant really in the way you want and add in some embellishments and rosary links so um yeah i wonder can you think of any other ways that you might use this or for any other any other designs oh right oh that's really helpful thanks angeline um angeline's just, just telling us all that she googled wire gauge conversion to millimeters and got a chart with all the sizes that's really handy i should have that up on the wall really um especially if i'm going to be um speaking to lots of you in the us so that i can have that on hand numbers don't seem to stay in my brain so um i do i will need it written down Okay, last couple, and then I can show you something else. Um, a little tip as well, if you're struggling to get your, your wire to go through, if you're struggling to make the wire go through, you know, because it's too straight, if you just give it a little t little um, sort of bend on the end, oh, well, you can see that it's just, just, just the tiniest little kink on the end, a curved sort of kink upwards, you can sort of scoop the wire, the, the, wire up through rather than trying to get in um your fingers in the in the loop and do it so if you just make that little curve it sort of helps it find its way through okay i nearly stitched them without putting a bead on This wire is really lovely as well. It's um, it's a copper core wire, and it's non-tarnish, which is really great because some plated wires you get they don't have a non-tarnish coating on, um, and they can sort of yellow over time, or you can even get that um, the sort of tarnishing that you would get like on on silver in the blackening, but this is um, got a coating on to stop that happening, and I've I've used tarnish. And non tarnished wire alongside other wires, and parts of my design have gone yellow and parts have stayed nice and bright, and it's very frustrating. So, um, it's always good to make sure that you, your wire, you're getting your wire from the same supplier or it's the same type of wire all the time. Um, okay, so I've gone all the way around, I've added those little um, Toho beads, uh, size 8 Tohos, all the way around, and now if I bring my cavachon back in. You can see that that is framing that really beautifully. This is lovely, this one. It looks very floral and pretty. Just in time for spring, which is coming, everybody. It really is. There's signs. I've seen the, I've seen the snowdrops and the daffodils. That it's definitely coming. Um, so there you go. It fits in there quite nicely. So, oh, thanks, Lisa. Hopefully I'll catch you next time. I might need to watch this a couple of times. <laughs> it would make a lovely brooch, Helen. It absolutely would. Um, and Angeline says you've got a handy ruler with all that on it. Oh, all the conversions. That's really that's useful. That's useful. Your jewelry tarnishes on your skin very easily unless it's sterling silver or fourteen karat gold. It's very annoying. Yeah, that can happen. And you know, there is um, evidence to suggest that 
um and i know it's true for me i wear copper a lot so i i've always got my copper bangle on um and sometimes if i'm poorly or um you know sort of certain hormone changes and things like that it will blacken my wrist but if i'm well and you know i'm okay then it it doesn't tarnish it doesn't it doesn't change my skin color so there's some something in that maybe if if you are tarnishing maybe there's a mineral you're lacking or and they say with copper when you blacken it's because you're absorbing the minerals and um i think we only take what we need you know when when apart from when we feed ourselves we often, i don't know about you but i often feed my things some things i definitely don't need but um yeah so maybe I sometimes say to people, well, let it let it do that for a few days and just see because it might be that you need you need that um, from the copper or from the silver even. Um, but yeah, there are there are things you can put onto metals to stop that happening. So you can put something called Renaissance wax. That's really good for sort of coating metals to stop them reacting with your skin. Um, different metals need different um, amounts of wax. It's all in the instructions. Um, and there's another thing called um, Everbright Coatings. That's really good. Very expensive, but it's very good, uh, especially protecting against allergies and things like that as well. So watchbacks in particular, um, I find, give me trouble. So, yeah, you can coat it with this stuff in it and it sort of stops it reacting. So there's a few things you could try if it if it really bothers you. Um, yeah. You don't like it tarnishing on you. I understand. It's not pretty, is it, going green or black? <laughs> so, but you know, if if you don't have to go anywhere, let it do it. It's it's probably quite good for you. Um, and, and they say it's good for arthritis and joint joint problems. It would make a lovely surround for a watch face. It would. That's a great idea. Is that a Sandra? Yeah, that, that would make a great idea. Um, it's almost sixty here in Maine now. Tomorrow it will be under twenty degrees. Wow. The snowdrops are now buried in snow. Ginny, where are you? Are you up north somewhere in the UK? Alkaline in your skin on any given day. Yeah, it yeah, it makes a difference, doesn't it? It's all sciencey. I'm sure there's some some science behind it. But you know, copper was sprinkled in wounds on the battlefields in um you know sort of in the eighteen hundreds, seventeen, eighteen hundreds, copper was ground down and sprinkled into wounds for its antibacterial properties. Now, you know, there were also lots of other strange medical practices, so I don't know how effective it was, but, you know, um, it must come from somewhere, that idea. Make lots of copper jewellery to wear, yeah. Oh, you're in Utah. It's snowing in Utah, okay. It's, it's definitely snowing down uh, here in the UK, but only only in the north or in Scotland. Um, it seems to be quite bad. Right, okay, we've got our cabochon in. I'll stop nattering now. I've got our cabochon in and um, our gems are all around the front. So we've got two tails of wire now. One from, you know, from going around and adding those those pieces in. So what I'm going to do is you'll have a longer one and a shorter one. So take the longer one and, and that's going to come down the back here. And then um, the shorter one we can just wrap around that bale area just to sort of cinch them together okay so just a couple of times around we'll we'll deal with that one in a minute and now this wire at the back we can take across the back of the gemstone so we're going to start securing this in place so it can't fall out okay so um we've got loads of loads of spaces along the frame where we can stitch this into place so we can either make a nice pattern and come backwards and forwards and make a nice pattern or we can do it randomly it's up to you um, it's up to you whether you, you mind what it looks like on the back or whether you're happy just to make sure it's secure so do whatever you like whatever you feel comfortable with I tend to make sure I've gone up and down and side to side or diagonally so that I know it's at no risk there's no risk of it coming out of place so we're just stitching finding finding places in that frame to take the wire through and then back along so I'm going to do a bit of a W sort of shape so I'm going to come down here catch along that side there and again all this is in the, the close-up photos so you can follow the pattern I followed um, in the close-up photos if you if you want to or you can just randomly stitch this in until you're happy that everything is secure and in the right place I think I'm going to come across 
do one across. Oh, there's that loop again. We don't want that. So if you remember, what we do is we just twist that loop out so that it opens and then back through. Um, you've got lots of arthritis. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Angelin. Um, and what is Charlie saying? Gemma, don't you hate it when you spend a lot of time and effort making a piece in silver plated wire only for the plating to wear off, rendering the piece unwearable and unsellable? Yes. That, yeah, that, you know, it, it is a problem. And I think it depends on um, on where you wear it. So like bracelets and rings, example, uh, you get quite a lot of wear. Whereas uh, a necklace or the front like this, um, it's not going to get a lot of wear. Also, um, the silver is quite protected by higher, by more protruding objects. So it's the, the, the silver elements aren't actually going to get much wear. Yeah, it is It is frustrating. I think if you're going to make anything with, you know, that you want longevity for, or you want as an heirloom piece, then, yeah, um, maybe do your practicing in the plated wire and then move up to um, sterling silver wire when you've got your design perfected and finalised. That's often what I do. If I'm doing some wire work piece in sterling silver, then I will make it up first in in copper wire just to check that my measurements are right and um, the design holds, etc. Okay, I've ended up with a bit of a, a star pattern on the back, which is nice. And that's very secure now. I don't need to do anything else. So to finish this wire, I'm just going to wrap around that frame um, two or three times to make sure that it doesn't unravel. Okay, so once I've got it wrapped around a few times, I'm going to push that right into the frame as far as I can. So I'm, I'm, I'm got um, fingernails that I use as tools, and I'm pushing that, that right in. If you haven't got fingernails, you can use um, some pliers just to push that right into the frame before you snip it off. And that way, none of the um, ends are going to scratch or poke you. Okay, so and again, once you've cut it, make it doubly doubly secure and doubly safe by pinching that end even further run your fingers over it just to make sure there's no sticky it bits right so um this wire at the top here we can get rid of this one too so i've wrapped that around a couple of times around the the two bale wires at the top so just again wrap that a couple of times just to make sure that it doesn't unravel and this time i'm going to cut that off at the back and just the same as before, I'm going to give it a bit of a pinch with my snipe or flat nose pliers just to make sure the end tucks in nicely. Okay, so now we're here. Um, I'm going to cut the ends of this wire to four centimetre length. So I'm going to go down to four centimetres on my ruler and give that a snip. Okay, and then I cut the other one to the same size. So four centimetres is going to give us, you know, a little little coiled bail you can go you can go longer if you want a bigger coil um, and then I'm going to come back to my um, bail making pliers this time I'm just using the second size on my um, on my pliers and I'm going to roll this wire down so it makes like a coil that sits on top and can we can thread our our um, cord or whatever we want to suspend this on through so I'm going to wrap down now what I want to make sure I do as I roll this round I want to make sure that I am working so here's if my bells my bell makers are here I want to make sure I'm working along the length of this um, mandrel or this the jaw of the plier so when I scroll down the coil is traveling this way okay that will make sense in just a minute hopefully so keep going down, okay, just till we get to there. That's given me um, three loops on my pliers. Okay. And now when we come to do the other one, we want to do the same. So we're going to make sure we obviously, we've got to make sure we're doing the loops in the same direction. So coming away from, from myself, but making sure that so I would turn this round if I was doing this just me, not showing you. I'd turn this round so I could um, orientate it so that you can see it properly. Just start that again. 
So I'm doing the same, but I'm making sure now that it's traveling up along in the opposite direction. So what we don't want is the two coils, um, we want this, the center to stay level with each other with the coils going off in either direction. Okay, so you just gotta make sure that you're wrapping that round in the right, in the right way, okay? So we end up with the two next to one another like that. And you can have this little split in the middle. Now you can push those up together if you want to, but I thought this was a nice little space to put a gemstone. So I'm going to um, put one of my little bicones in there when I put this onto, onto the threading or the chain that I'm creating. Okay. Um, Right, so now I'm going to take some of my, back to my 0.8mm wire and I'm going to start creating the chain for this cabochon. So um, you might have um, some little offcuts that you've cut off from making your bale or snipping the excess off of from making your, your um, pendant. So that's good if you have because making the little rosary link chains is ideal for that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little eye loop on the end of this wire um, and it's going to form the first part of a chain link. Okay, So now I'm coming to my round nose pliers and I'm just going to put the wire into the jaws of the pliers. I want to make sure I can't feel anything protruding from the wire, from the jaws. And then I'm going to turn, turn my wrist uh, and my pliers around like this until my loop sort of um, the, it touches so it's made a loop can you see it's off to the side a bit like um, the letter P if I turn it that way it's sort of off to the side like that so what I want to do is level that up and make it look more like a lollipop so I'm just going to pop my tip of my pliers into and hold on to where the wires touch where the loop meets meets the straight wire and then I'm just going to use my finger to push against the tail of that wire just to make that loop sit centrally. Okay, so there's your eye loop. Um, there's a tool. Oh, good to know. Um, there is a tool that can be used that smooths the ends of the wire where you cut them and they might be jagged. Yes. Does anybody name, know the name of that tool? I think I think it's called a wire burrer um, and it's basically like a little cup with a, a burr that's in, you know, on the out, usually burrs are on the outside and they're little sort of wavy lines that go around uh, the head of something and, and they, they turn and sort of etch out or engrave or file an end. Well, a wire end burrer is like a a concave version of that rather than a convex and you put the wire into it and twist it now that that's great it, it's great but the the thing you can just use a, a, a plain needle file to do to to smooth the ends of your wire as well so just a, a simple needle file doesn't matter whether it's a diamond cut or a, a metal working file give that a give it a rub over Make sure you go all the way around the end and that will smooth the end off nicely for you. If I'm ever making ear wires, then I'll always file the ends because you don't want any sharp bits going through your ear. Right, um, coming back to this then. So I've got I've got my eye pin. So I'm just going to add a combination of my um, seed beads, crystal bicones, and then I'm going to pop that through, through that first section on the bale there. And then before I go to the next section, I'm just going to pop on one of the bicones and sit that in between the two ends. Okay, so that's it's going to be a bit fiddly. We want it inside in there. So that's sitting in there nicely. Because of that shape, it nestles really beautifully in there. It just peeks out from the middle like a little set gemstone. So then pull that in and then we'll pop another bicone and another seed bead just to finish that little section there okay and then we can put an eye loop on the opposite end so i'm going to get my flat nose pliers and when i'm making an eye loop i always bend the wire off um to an angle first it makes when i roll that loop back it makes it into that p into that lollipop position we were talking about rather than having that 
P position, we want a lollipop. So I've bent that first to give me the marker. Then I'm going to cut this end down. It's about a centimetre um, I'm cutting to make the loop. And again, this is something with practice, you'll just get consistent. Like I always seem to cut the same size um, and I always seem to use the same point on my pliers because I do it so often. Um, but if at first you want to pop a little mark on your pliers to know where you're where you're doing your loops then do that and if you want to measure your wire then of course do that too um, until you get sort of into that it's almost like muscle memory now for me where I cut and how long I leave the, the lengths of wire okay so there's your um, there's your pendant all nicely done and finished and then there's your little hanger that you can use to attach into a chain or um, further rosary links so if you want to make rosary links it's exactly the same as I've just shown you just combinations of gemstones and I loop either side what I'm going to do is I'll make one and um, you can and show you how to do it and then you can um, do as many or as few as you like there's nothing to stop you making a nice seed bead rope or um, because I know lots of you are very talented with your seed beading um, so you can make a nice seed bead rope and uh, suspend suspend your pendant from that and if you're going to do that you can just leave these tails um, for the leave these tails for the bale longer so use a longer length to start with leave these longer and then use your bale making pliers to make a much bigger much bigger um, coil to thread your seed bead rope through or just lots of strands of seed beads I love that multi strands of seed beads you're going to have absolutely tons left on your tow hose um, to make just a seed bead neckline to, to suspend this from um, but if you do want to do rosary links let me talk you through so um, again make sure your ends cut um, and it's a nice nice flat cut you don't want to jag at the end there so and then make your loop on one end okay so once you've got your loop I'm going to straighten it up so I want to come in here and straighten that up so I've got my lollipop shape rather than my P shape and then I'm going to take a selection of beads so it's up to you if you if you want to use your bicones doing this and that's great or you can just use um, just your toe hose I think they look lovely um, I'm going to use a combination again so I've got ooh, this one doesn't want to behave there you go do you talk to your beads I talk to my beads <laughs> Um, yours, your loops are never the same even when you mark your pliers um, different size loops every time even with a looper don't know how I manage it it's just a talent that is that is pretty that is pretty clever that <laughs> um, you can make the elements and join them with jump rings yes you can of course you can join things together with jump rings um, but when you do do a rosary link the nice thing is you don't need jump rings you just link each link into each other so you don't actually need any jump rings just something else you can you can do away with um, multi strand necklace that would look lovely with one of those made of seed beads and crystals yeah it would really would wrap loops joined with jump rings yeah you could you could wrap, do wrap loops into jump rings but if the nice if you're doing wrap loops yeah it's, it's sometimes you can forget to join before you wrap and then jump rings are a godsend <laughs> Yes, um, uh, spoiler rotten beads will definitely sell head pins. Um, and the head pins sort of take out half the battle because one loop's done for you and you have to do one. So it, it halves the time for you. Um, you try to make deals with your beads to get them to do what you want, but they have minds of their own. Yes, they do. Especially when people are watching, they, they seem to get even, um, even more annoying, don't they? <laughs> I talk to everything I do, even when watching YouTube, yeah. Yes. The joys of working at home means that um, you can talk to yourself all the time and nobody knows. <laughs> okay, so I've got my little selection of gemstones or beads onto my wire. And then I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to make that, that 45 degree bend before I do the second loop. Okay, so I'm going to pop my snipe nose pliers right next to, right next to the beads. Use my finger to push that wire over. Okay. So I've got this nice bend now. Then I'm going to cut off. So I've got about a centimetre of, of um, wire there. 
then take my flat nose ply my round nose pliers pop them so that there's nothing sticking out of the end so I'm going to get that that um, curve right to the end and then roll my pliers in towards the beads okay now if you find it's a little bit you've got a little bit too much wire there then you can come round and you can nip off any excess from in here so you can get your flush cutters right in and nip off any excess if you do find you've cut a bit too much wire okay I'm gonna squish that closed again okay so then this would be my section so what I would do is I'll just make a load of these up even you know even numbers so I've got the same number for each side and then I would just connect them into this um, design so just open up so to connect what you do is you open these loops now you don't open them by pulling them apart you open them by twisting upwards so if I bring that up here so we don't pull it apart if we pull this apart we distort the circle and we also weaken the point weaken it here okay so what we do is I'm if you can see it's held flat against my finger and if you watch my hand with my pliers what I do is turn it upwards so I'm making um, making that that loop open in that way and then pop it onto the next loop in your design and then turn it back down okay so and there you go and that's how you would rosary link that that necklace um, and you can add or you know add anything you like into that rosary link chain so the only other thing i've got to show you in this design is um just showing you just almost exactly the same as what we've just done and um, it's at this time we've got a little spiral on the end and these were just to make some little decorative dangles just so you've got a bit of movement in your piece now they're completely optional but I'll show you how to do them just in case you fancy fancy doing that so I've got again another off off cut of wire what, what's nice you don't get much waste in wire work you can you always use even these little bits can make little um, rosary links so again I'm gonna make sure that my end is trimmed down nice and flat and I'm going to start this spiral. Now, spirals take a bit of practice. Um, you might find that you just do them really easily and you have no trouble at all. And then you also might find that they um, are your nemesis and take you ages to perfect them. But they're worth perfecting because they're so useful. Okay, so right into the tip of my pliers, as close as I can get to the end of my pliers and as close as I can get to the tip of the wire. I don't want any sticking out okay and I'm just going to grip really firmly with um, my with my pliers onto that wire and then I'm going to take my thumb and push push against the tip of the wire and I'm pushing the wire around so it's really close to the nose to the jaw of that of the pliers okay so I've got my little loop started so you can see it's a really tight little loop there at the center you want that bit as tight as you can possibly get I'm going to put my pliers back in, okay, back in there, and then go again. So I'm going to take, push the wire around, sort of doing a combination of turning my wrist and pushing the wire around the, the shape. Okay, so um, pushing round and round. And what you'll find is you'll get so far, I've got to this point here, where I've got sort of, um, two almost twice around with my spiral and then I can't hold it anywhere with my rhinos pliers without squashing it so what I need to do now is swap pliers so I'm going to swap my pliers now to my snipe nose or um, I've heard them called other things recently and I can't remember what they are but flat or snipe nose pliers and I'm going to hold across the, that spiral now so I can continue so hold across and then push the wire around now the the important thing here is to hold really firmly so that the wire doesn't slip and slide if we get this slipping and sliding within the pliers what we do is we scratch the wire and take any coating off so if you can hold it nice and tight so that it doesn't slip when you push you're not going to mark your wire now it seems sort of counterintuitive to hold really tightly to protect your wire but it but it does it does protect it okay so once you've got the size of the spiral you you like then you come back in and again we're going to do that same sort of thing just to make this less like a like a p shape or q shape 
and more like a lollipop so I'm going to come back in down to the point where the um, spiral ends and I'm going to push with my thumb or finger against the spiral to bring it back into line so that it's got like that lollipop shape okay like that and the spiral sits on the end and then we use this now like a head pin so we thread on our combination of beads so whatever you fancy on there okay like that and then we're going to make a loop at the top now to sit this loop so that the spiral sits flush uh, flat so that you actually see the spiral face we want our loop to go in the opposite direction to our spiral okay so when I start the loop um, I'm going to make sure that that 95 degree that 45 degree angle I do at this end oh oh beads everywhere um, I'm going to make sure that I push that 45 degree angle out like that so with the spiral sort of flat flat side um, up then so the, the edge up so if I turn it that way the spirals there that wires come in towards me does that make sense hope so um i kn you know them as needle nose pliers that's why my dad always called them yes i've that's i think that's what it is i watched um, uh, a youtube channel where they were saying needle nose pliers the other day that's the other one i couldn't think of some people say dolphin nose as well that's another one right so now i'm going to cut this down exactly as before i want this loop to be a bit bigger because i need to get it into the framework and also it, uh, have a bit of movement so that it dangles and swings. So I'm going to cut this one a bit bigger. So I'm going to go just slightly bigger than my one centimetre that I've done before. And slightly further down my round nose plier so I get a bigger loop. And turn that loop round with your pliers until it loops and meets. Okay, so we've got now the loop that side. And if we turn it, we've got, we can see the spiral. Okay, so we're just going to open this up and pop it into our cabochon frame. So again, open it just like um, by twisting it upwards. Then take it to the point on your cabochon you'd like it to dangle. Now, the best points to put these, um, to dangle these, i get a little pin to show you. So we've got the little spaces where our, where the um, bicones are here in the loops and just below the loops you can see you've got these little triangular spaces and that's where we want to attach these um these little um drops in those triangular spaces you're not going to see them from the front and you've got a bit more room for them to to flow and move so i'm just going to pop one in it doesn't matter where just to show you so just hook hook that in and I'm hooking it in from the front so that the close is at the back to make a little bit of difference to the to the design um, and then just close that up and there is a dangle attached and you can add as many of those as you like and that my lovelies is how you do the design <laughs> um, I have no idea how long I've been going on for a long time sorry <laughs> I'll get quicker and stop waffling as much but I hope you've um I hope you've enjoyed it and oh that's nice Shelly it's nice to see a demo without being rushed thank you I definitely haven't been rushed I've gone on for a long time Julia I hope that's okay <laughs> um chain nose chain nose everybody's saying chain nose or needle nose um the opposite to plain or, or plain <laughs> I don't know. I think I've missed quite a bit. Um, oh, Charlie, a tip for getting the loops the same size is to put your round nose pliers in the first loop and... Oh, missed it. It's gone. First loop and see how far up the plier the loop is. Then try and match the other loops at that point along the plier. Yes, that's a fantastic tip. Um, I meant doing wrap loops for extra length, then joining them with jump rings if you're a beginner. Yes, that does take a bit of time out. Um, yeah yes we are both birds <laughs> hawk and crow yeah we've laughed at that before me and Jem we have um, Jem hawks and Jem crow <laughs> um, okay hopefully if you've answered questions either I or Julia have answered them for you and and thank you for 
for spending so much time here with me so i'm going to put the camera back so i can see see you not just looking at my board thank you for spending such um so much time with me today and making my first time here at spilt rotten beads um live um really fun and i felt very welcome thank you you're all so lovely and chatty um i really hope the demo um was clear for you and i hope that the the photographs help if you want to if you want to have a go at making it please do and and please show us we'd love to see there's a um the friends of sport rotten beads or of sport rotten beads share page sport rotten beaders page i would get confused there's, there's so there's so many groups i'm in um but if if anybody knows please put a link so that you can share anything you make we'd love to see it tag me in it so i can see too um I love seeing I love seeing pieces created from demos that I do. Um, I notice I use my finger measurements to cut wire to make loops. Um, I probably do. I probably do that without thinking. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Sue. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Now I know there's a few. Um, I know there's a few of you that are in um, a lot and come and do these uh, Wednesday workshops a lot. Spoke rotten bees, but I also know there's lots of you that don't. So. I'm going to advise you to sign up to the newsletter with Sport Rotten Beads, not only because you get to know what's coming up in advance and you get access to all the tutorials, you also get loads of discounts. And I think even for signing up, tell me if I'm right, Juliet, if you're still in, um, even for signing up, you get a discount code. So, you know, if, if, you, if you're signing up today because um, you've never, you've never, um, been to Sport Rotten Beads before and you want to get the kit that I've just demoed with then you can use a discount on that or anything else you can also get your discount on the bail making pliers but sign up to the newsletter because there's so many things that you get to learn about ahead of everybody else you get to take take advantage of the opportunities and the discounts and and all the special offers and and everything and I, I can't recommend them enough so if you if you've found Sport Rotten Beads for the first time today lucky you um it's it, you're gonna have a great time there you're gonna find loads of goodies so lucky you sorry bank account never mind um loads of inspiration as well um so i think i'm gonna say goodbye um thank you again for having me um and and i'll see you hopefully next month because i've we've got more designs in the making but also great to hear what you'd like to see so if if um if you've seen anything that i've done before that you think well i'd like to see how to do that then please let me know and i'm sure julia and i between us can work out how we can bring that to you other than that i'm gonna say goodbye and thank you so much and i think all i have to do is press stop streaming so here goes if i'm still here i did it wrong <laughs> uh, see you again soon bye everybody thank you so much again bye Am I sure I want to stop?